Hello everyone, Christine here from Sewing in the City and I'm coming to you today with a tutorial for how to make this really simple knit pull on skirt. So if you watched my fabric haul video from last week, um, this was one of the fabrics that I received from Minerva. Um, so this is actually a knit, um, a quilted knit with just a bit of stretch. So not too much stretch. Um, and when the fabric arrived, I instantly saw a, a coordinating set. So I kind of knew in the back of my mind that if I had enough fabric left over, I was gonna make a matching mini skirt to go with my bleaker sweatshirt. And so I did, and I actually love the way it turned out. Um, and wearing it uh, it is so comfortable. I realized I wouldn't mind having another one of these in my wardrobe to take me through the winter. So I ended up styling mine um, it, with a black turtleneck and these really cool um, dotted like tights um, and my beret for kind of a French look. And then I also styled it back to a black bleaker sweatshirt for a little bit more of a casual look. Okay, so let's get started with the supplies we're gonna need. So I made my skirt out of this quilted knit. It has about 20% stretch, so not a lot of stretch. So the one that I'm gonna be making today, I'm gonna be using a actual um, sweatshirt knit. So this I also got from Minerva. This is when we think about sweatshirts, this is a true sweatshirt knit fabric. I'll show you kind of the close up. So it's got that really soft, fuzzy inside and you know, just the regular sweatshirt on the outside. It also doesn't have a lot of stretch. Maybe, uh, I think, slightly less than the print that I have. For fabric, you're gonna need, um, a, depending on the width and depending on your size, between a half a yard and a yard of fabric, um, but you're gonna know exactly how much after we make our patterns. So now that the fabric's out of the way, we're gonna need a couple other supplies. The first thing, you'll want to have a tape measure handy, um, cause we're gonna take some measurements, we're gonna make our own pattern. We're gonna need, um, you'll need a chalk, like some kind of chalk pen. Um, I'm gonna just use this blue one cause I'm using the black fabric. And you're also gonna need some elastic. So this elastic that I'm using and that I used in my, um, my sample is one and a quarter inches wide. You could use any width that you want, but I really like the way this, um, this inch and a quarter, so I ended up folding under an inch and a half to make my waistband. And I let's work out our general rectangle that we're going to start with. So we'll need to um, take our hip measurement. So if you haven't taken your hip measurement before, or it's been a while, um, you'll want to just measure at the most protruding part of your hip. So um, if you stand to the side and look in the mirror, you can see like. The part that sticks out the most, that's your hip. You wanna keep the tape measure parallel to the floor as you measure around your hip. My hip measurement is 36 inches and I want my skirt to fit like right on my body. So I'm going to add an extra um, inch for my seam allowance. So um, in total, I want 37 inches of for the width. So I've just taken my hip measurement and added an inch, and that's how I get the width of the piece I need. Then I'll divide that in two because I'm gonna give it two side seams. So each of my pieces will be 18 and a half inches wide. So now for the length, you wanna measure from wherever you want the, the waistband of your skirt to fall, um, and then measure down approximately how long you'd like it. Now, when I made this one, I made it a little bit longer to start and then I just shortened it up once I could actually get it on my body. But if you wanna make it exactly like mine, what I did was I decided I wanted this to be a higher waisted skirt. So I knew I wanted it to fall right at my waist. So to find your true waist, you just stand straight and tip your body over and this kind of indent here, that's your natural waist. So I just started at that indent and measured down, my finished skirt is 18 inches long. So that's our base measurement. Then we're gonna add an inch and a half for our waistband fold over 
and an inch and a half for our hem. So that gives us a total length of 21 inches. So I am cutting out my fabric. I'm just marking 18 and a half inches wide. So the 18 and a half was my hip measurement plus one inch. Um, so that's going to be the width. So I'm marking that on the part of the fabric that stretches because I want this to go around my hips. And then I'm going to mark down my 21 inches right about there. Um, and then I'm going to cut this out. Let's see, we'll do one more marking here. You could also just use a ruler and your rotary cutter to cut this out. Um, so I'm gonna grab my scissors. Okay, so put this extra over there. So now I have my rectangle. Okay, so the next marking that we're gonna do is on the um, actually both sides, the bottom and the waistband of our skirt. So this is the, the long way. This is around my hips. So I'm just gonna mark in an inch from the cut edge, and then I'm gonna mark down six inches. One, two, three, four, five, six, so about here. And I am going to, I can use my ruler here, and I'm just going to kind of draw a line to connect those. So essentially what we've done is just created a dart here and that's going to bring in at the waist of our skirt. Okay, so now that I've marked in the inch on this side, I'm just gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna just use my rotary cutter and just trim that dart piece, whoopsie my rotary blade blade needs replaced. Um, so I've just cut off this little strip here. Okay, so now you can see I'm starting to have the curve. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Just pull this down. So I'm gonna mark in about an inch. And then one, two, three, four, five, six. Mark that down. And then I'll connect to those with a line. Okay, so we did that on our waistband. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on the hem. So we're actually going to just fold this in half if you want, and then we can just use the rotary cutter and I'm going to do the same, just triangle cut. So now I have a rectangle that comes in. You can see it there at the bottom and you can see it here at the top. And that is our skirt. So we're ready to sew finally. So I'm gonna place this right sides together and first sew my side seams. And I'll meet you back here to put in our waistband. Okay, so I've got my side seams sewn. Now I'm just pressing my seams open. Um, you can also use your overlocker and finish these seams and then press them to one side. My fabric does not uh, fray at all. So I decided just to skip the bulk and I'm just pressing them open, just like that. So you could also zigzag your seams if you wanted if you don't have an overlocker. Okay, so I've got both of my side seams sewn and I've just tried on my skirt to make sure that it's fitting properly. So if you try your skirt on and you find that it's big through your hips, you can simply just take this in following your original seam line. If you try it on and realize that it's only big around your waist, maybe you have an arched back like I do, you can really easily just take in a couple little quick darts right at your waistline to kind of bring in some of that extra bulk right here at your waistline. 
So I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna take in those darts on the back of my skirt. So I'm just going to kind of take pick a spot on the back of my skirt, fold it right sides together, and I'm just literally kind of making my own dart. And I'm gonna take it down maybe four inches or so, and I'm just clipping in a little bit at the waist. It's very similar to what we did at our side seams. It's the same effect. So I'm gonna do two that are evenly placed, and I'm taking in about a half of an inch. So just, taking that in and I'm taking it just a couple of inches down and then I'm gonna sew these just like a regular dart. Just be careful that you don't take too much in from your waist because you wanna still make sure that you can get it over your hips. Okay, so I've got my little darts sewn in and I did give them a nice press. So now let's work on our waistband. So what I'm gonna do, turn this inside out, um, right sides in. So then my elastic, so you wanna grab your elastic. Mine is an inch and a quarter wide. Um, so I'm gonna fold under an inch and a half on the top of my waistband. So you can um, use a tape measure, you could use a seam guide. You can also press this first with your iron. I'm just um, kind of going to eyeball it, put a couple pins in, um, but pretty much I'm gonna take this to my machine with my tape measure and just kind of sew and measure as I go. That's kind of my style. If you wanted to use your overlocker, you could definitely overlock this raw edge before you do this, or you could zigzag if you have, um, you know, if your fabric frays, but I am just doing this. So now I'm gonna sew around to create my casing, but I'm gonna leave about an inch or so open. So I'm gonna start here, sew all the way around and then end here. So this part here will be open and that's where I'm gonna thread my elastic through. So I'm gonna just... Okay, so there are places of this waistband where as, because I've taken in the darts, that um, when I'm folding it over, I have to stretch the top just a little bit to fit. So you're essentially folding this under. I have my tape measure just to make sure I keep it at an inch and a half. I'm kind of stretching it all um, as I go just to make sure it fits. So just a little tip. Okay, so I have my casing sewn. So now I'm just gonna grab my elastic. Um, you can measure it loosely. This is already, this was just a leftover that I had that just happens to be about the right length. So I'm just gonna use a safety pin and just thread this through my casing. and I'm just pulling up the elastic to make sure that it's fitting me the way I want to with the elastic right around my waist. So I love the way this is looking. I do need to adjust the, um, the elastic once I get it to the right length. So I'm gonna place another safety pin right there and then secure these edges on the machine and then they'll be ready to hem. So to secure my elastic, I'm just gonna sew a box right here. I've laid them, um, you know, so there's no twisting, just laid them flat and then sew a box right here, so. Now I'm just 
just gonna take this extra edge of my elastic and I'm just gonna trim close to my box there. And then the underside as well, I had a little bit of extra. So I'll just trim that off as well. And then it's a nice flat um, seam there so I can just kind of pull it in and now I can adjust these gathers evenly. Um, and I'm just gonna sew our opening there. I'll just go back and top stitch that down so we have a nice secure waistband. Okay, so I've kind of adjusted the gathers, just worked with the elastic a little bit and our waistband is done. So next, the last thing we need to do is just hem up the bottom. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing that I did on the waistband. I'm gonna turn this inside out and just fold up an inch and a half along the bottom and then top stitch. So if you are not sure about your length, maybe you added some extra length just um, so you could have some play, you just wanna try it on and mark your hem. But I know I'm gonna fold up an inch and a half here and top stitch this down. Okay, so I gave it a final press and here it is. It's so cute. I love the waistband. Um, this one is a little bit sportier than my printed one. Um, definitely gonna wear it with some tights and boots, um, but that is the really simple pencil tube skirt. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Be sure to tag me on Instagram if you make your own skirt and I'll see you next time. Bye.